This video is for educational purposes only and only those competent in electrical wiring and electrical safety procedures should attempt this wiring. Make sure the electricity is off prior to starting. Hi, this is Bill for Sparky Channel. Today I'm going to show you how to install two exterior weather resistant and tamper resistant 20 amp receptacles in an exterior two gang box which is served by a 20 amp circuit. One receptacle will be a 20 amp GFCI receptacle and the other receptacle will be a standard 20 amp receptacle. The GFCI receptacle will protect the standard receptacle. I'll show you how this is accomplished. On the GFCI receptacle you will find a line area which is for the line wires. The line wires are the ones that provide the power from the circuit to the receptacles. The neutral line wire goes to the silver terminal and the black hot wire goes to the black terminal. Also on the GFCI you will find a load area. The load wires are the ones which will bring the power in a protected manner to the adjacent standard receptacle. I'll accomplish this by using a white pigtail for the neutral and I'll use a black pigtail for the hot from the load to the adjacent standard receptacle. There is a ground wire that comes from the line cable and there is an equipment grounding conductor which is securely attached to the aluminum exterior box. These two ground wires plus two ground pigtails will be connected together and the pigtails will serve both receptacles with a ground wire. The two gang box has been cocked on three sides. Here I'm putting the EGC and the line ground wire into a five conductor Wego lever nut. Now I'll put the ground wire from the GFCI into the lever nut. Make sure it's all the way in there and close it down. Give it a little tug. Make sure it's tight. Okay, now this is a pigtail that goes from the load area of the GFCI over to the standard receptacle. And I just put the white on the neutral, the white pigtail on the neutral. Now I'm going to put my black pigtail on the hot side of the load portion of the GFCI. Once again, that's going to go over to the standard receptacle. Tighten them down, nice and snug. Now, here is the line wire neutral, and it's going to the silver terminal. That's the neutral side of the GFCI on the line area of the GFCI. And tighten it down real well. And here is your hot line wire, and it's going to the black hot terminal on the line area of the GFCI. And that's going to be going to your standard receptacle. So tighten that down real well. Now, here is your standard receptacle. And I'm going to put its ground wire into the Wago lever nut. Now, I'm going to be hooking up those pigtails. Now, here's the neutral pigtail that comes over from the GFCI load area. And it doesn't matter which silver terminal that I connect this pigtail to because there's a brass tab that connects those two silver terminals. So I, su I selected one and put it in there and tighten it up real well. And now here's the hot pigtail from the GFCI load area. This receptacle is the load of the GFCI. So I'm going to tighten that down real well. And once again, it didn't matter which bronze terminal that I connected to because there is a bronze tab connecting those two bronze terminals. Now I am going around both of the receptacles with black electrician's tape. The reason I use the black electrician's tape is to protect the terminals from hitting each other or from touching the side of the box accidentally. This step isn't mandatory, it's just something that I like to do. I think it's an extra measure that is particularly good to do with exterior receptacles. By the way, this video is being done with no editing and no time stoppages. So the next step here will be to dress the wires. The goal 
is to get the wires back into the back of the box accordion style so you don't damage the wires or stress them but so that your receptacles will sit comfortably where they're supposed to be so I'm using a tool it's called a volt claw it's just something I use that helps me get the wires back into the back of the box and now I'm probably use it again that one didn't sit back the way I wanted it so I'm I'm just gently pushing the wires and I'm gonna work with these until I get them about the way I want prior to putting on the weatherproof box one tip that I recommend is to use the screws that come with the weatherproof box they're a little longer than the screws that come with the receptacles now I'll screw in the extra long screws into the areas where they go through the receptacles and notice I'm not screwing them all the way down I'm leaving them long and you'll see in a minute exactly why I'm doing that it's important to get your receptacles into place as well as you can right now the GFCI is always going to stick out a little farther than the standard receptacle I like the position of the receptacles pretty well. Okay, here comes the seal proof, weather proof cover. And notice how it just slid into place. That's why you want to have the screws long. And now I'm going to use my DeWalt 12 volt impact driver. It's just a little light driver, it's great for electrical work. And I'll screw down these screws. Not all the way, just most of the way. Right now, you have to really work on the reveal. That's how the receptacles are fitting in their slots. You know, you don't want them cockeyed one way or another. And it's going pretty good right now. Now I'll go around and do the final tightening with a screwdriver. You just get them just right. And you're watching the reveal the whole time. Make sure that they sit very nicely. There it goes. It's just right all the way around. I like it. Now I'll put my receptacle tester in the GFCI and I'm going to turn on the circuit breaker. My panel is very close to the circuit breaker so it's on now and that means correct wiring. Now I'm going to press test, it went off, reset, it went back on so that's working properly. I'll put it in the standard receptacle. It is cr wired correctly, there's test, there's reset. So the GFCI does protect the receptacle and I'm done. One thing to check for when installing a modern GFCI is that you have a green LED on. That means that it has passed its self-test and it's good to go. If it has a red LED, that means you got a problem and you should probably change out the, the GFCI or figure out what's wrong. I'll put links in my video description for the Leviton weather resistant, tamper resistant, GFCI and standard receptacles you saw in the video. Also, I'll put a link for Wago lever nuts of various sizes. I'll put a link for the DeWalt 12 volt max impact driver. I'll put links for both the seal proof and the Leviton weatherproof covers. And last but not least, I'll put a link for the Volt Claw tool. Thanks. I hope this video was helpful.